Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we created the basic structure of our application. Now in this video, we will create the important components of the room persistence library, which are the entity, the data access object and the database itself. So the first thing that we will create is the entity. So I will create a new Kotlin file class and I will create a class and I will name it node. And we are going to use a data class. So we don't need the class body. It is a data class. Now before writing the values, let me tell you about entities. So whenever you will create an entity, you need to annotate it with the entity annotation. Now this entity is nothing but the table in your database. So room provides us an abstraction layer over the SQLite. So you do not need to create the tables, but you will create the entities and which are the data classes in Kotlin. Now this note is the table and for the columns, we will define all the variables that we want for this note. Or you can say we will define all the attributes that we need for this note. So the class name is the table name and the attributes are the columns of the table. So for this note, I want three attributes. The first thing is val id of type int, then val title of the note of type string and then note of type string as well. So we have three columns for this table note. Now ID would be a primary key. So I will define it as primary key and I will make the auto generate to true. That means the ID will be generated automatically. Now ID is the column name, title is the column name and the note is the column name. If you want to make the column names different, you can use the column info annotation. And here you can define the name and you can define whatever column name you want. So if you want different column names, you can do this thing. But right now I don't want different column names. So I have three attributes, ID, title and note. And the ID is the primary key, which is automatically generated. It is something like auto increment if you know the SQLite. So we have our entity. Now we will create the DAO or data access object. So to communicate with our database or to access our database, we need functions. For example, we need to save this note into our database. That means we will call some function that will save this, that will save a note inside our database. So for these kind of functions, we will create DAOs. So remember in this example, we have only one entity, but we will create DAOs for all the entities that we have. So we need only one DAO for now. So I will create an interface and I will name it node DAO. DAO means data access object. DAO is the short form. And I will create a Kotlin interface. Now whenever you are creating a DAO, it is an interface and you need to annotate it with DAO. And inside the interface, you will just define your functions to access the database. For example, we want to save a node to our database. So what we will do, we will create a function add node and this function will take node as a parameter and this function will insert the node into that database. So to do this, we just need to define the insert here. So we annotated this function with this insert annotation and the room will do the rest. You will just call this method, this function and the room will insert the node for you. So you see it is very easy. Now to get all the nodes, you can create one more function to get all nodes. Now this function will not take any parameter, but it will return us all the nodes from the database. So we can use a list for this of type node. Now here we will define query. We will annotate this function with query and inside this query, we will write the query to fetch all the nodes from the database. And 
you know this thing select asterisk or select star from if you will write a wrong table name it will give you an error because I told you that room checks the query errors at compile time so it is less likely that you will make some mistakes writing the queries so it is also a good thing now remember the table name is note which is your entity name so your entity is actually the table in your SQLite database and the attributes of the entity are the column names so here we will write select asterisk from node now if you want to insert multiple values at once you can use this thing fun add multiple nodes and here you can pass where arg of type node and to this function you can pass multiple nodes and all the nodes will be saved to your database now the last thing that we need is we need our database it is again an abstract class so we will create new class new kotlin file class and i will name this class as node database and this is a class now remember when you are creating your database class it should be an abstract class and you need to define the annotation database here and inside database you define all the entities that you have now you will have multiple entities in your project right now we have only one but it is understood that we will have multiple entities when we will work on some big project so we will define the entities inside array so square braces means array and inside this array we will define all the entities so right now we have only one so we will write note class but if you have multiple entities you will write like this but right now i have only one and the second parameter for this database is your version of the database so we are using the version one now later if you want to change the database schema you can change this version and then you can create migration classes to change the database structure so it is very easy now inside this abstract class you will create functions to get your DAOs so let's say you have four DAOs so you will create four functions to get the instances of your DAOs in this case I have only one DAO which is node DAO our data access object so I will create a function and it, it will be an abstract function so abstract fun get note DAO and the return type would be note DAO so this function will give us the DAO and from this DAO we will get our entity and with the help of the entity we will set or get the value so this is how room works so come back to node database and here I will build the room database and to build the room database I will create a companion object here inside this companion object I will define a private val instance of type note database and it is null for now so we have private val instance and currently it is null and I will make it volatile in nature because I want all the threads sorry I have written val here it should be var because I will initialize this instance later and we cannot make val a volatile property so I make it volatile because volatile means this instance is immediately available for all the other threads and because I want this instance to be available for all the other threads immediately I made it volatile now I will create one more thing here which is private val lock and I will make the type n now here I will write a operator function invoke this invoke will take context as a parameter I hope you know what invoke is but I will tell you just wait for now now this invoke will check if the instance is not null if instance is not null what we will do 
we will return the instance immediately but if the instance is null we will write a synchronized block here so synchronized and we will use the lock object for the synchronized block now inside the synchronized block again i will check if the instance is not null this is the null check operator if the instance is null i will call a function so let's create a function that will build our room database so i will write private fun build database again it will take context as a parameter and this function will build the database for us so i will write room dot database builder now this database builder takes three parameters the first parameter is the context and here i will pass context dot application context so even if we will pass the context from a fragment it will take the application context only the second parameter is our database class which is node database so here we will write node database class dot java and the last parameter is the database name so in this case i am writing node database and you can give any name to your database and finally we will call the function build to build our database and i just forget to inherit the room database inside this class and it is very important when you are creating your database class it should be abstract and you should inherit or extend room database to your class now the error is gone finally we can call the build method to build our database now here if the instance is null we will call the build database to build our database now this function will return us the database so we need to assign the database that is returned to this function into this instance so that is why i will write an also here and from the it keyword which is having our node database we will assign it to instance pretty simple right now we will call this node database we will pass the context and from here we will get our dao and with the help of the DAO, we can insert a node to database and we can fetch the nodes from the database. So let's see how we do this. So we will come inside add node fragment and here I will override function on activity created and here I can write node database. And we will pass the context here and let's make sure it is not null. Now when you write like this node database and parenthesis, it calls the invoke. So that's why we use invoke. It is nice in syntax. So when you write like this node database and then parenthesis, it comes here and it calls the invoke. Now invoke is checking if the instance is not null, return it. If the instance is null, initialize the instance and then return the instance. Now from this instance, we will get this get node DAO, which will give us the node DAO. So let's call it. So we will call get node DAO and from get node DAO, we can call the function add node to insert a node to database and get all nodes to fetch the nodes from the database. And we can also use this add multiple nodes to add multiple nodes into our database but it is not that simple and I am going to stop this video here only. So what we learned is we learned how to create entity, how to create DAOs and how to build the room database. And in the next video, we will finally learn how we can use the room to save values to database and to get back the saved values from the database. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please hit on that like button, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. And if you are having any question, you can leave your question in the comments below. So thank you guys. This is Bilal Khan now signing off.